Hey guys, Andy here, and today on Andy Before Japan, I'm going to be talking with you about my first two weeks in Japan. So just a little backstory on me for those who don't know. I'm a United States Navy veteran. I served from 2010-2015, and during that time, I was stationed out in Yokosuka, Japan. Now, for those who don't know, Yokosuka is in the Kanagawa Prefecture, which is right below where Tokyo is, the largest city in Japan, that's technically a city, not a you know metropolitan area, is in Kanagawa. It's called Yokohama. I was stationed out there for a little over two years. I had a blast, made tons of videos. Check out the playlist in the uh, description down below. I'll also pin it in the comments as well so you guys can take a look at some of the videos that I made during my time out there. What led up to all that was basically my first ship, USS Kurtz, FFG-38. 38 Special was out in San Diego, but at the time we were on deployment in Central America and the Kurtz was looking to decom at the uh, beginning of 2013. So coming up on six years now. Yeah, six years. Wow. <laughs> That's crazy. But yeah, um, during the time we were on deployment in Central America, um, everybody was getting orders out to different other commands because the ship was decomming, that's decommissioning, meaning that you know nobody would be on the ship anymore and it would get sold to either a foreign fleet or be used for some kind of exercise where it would be sunk. So in other words, wasn't gonna be any need for us to be on the ship anymore. So we all had to go somewhere and at that point, I had just graduated sonar school out in San Diego. They needed to put me somewhere. So they were originally looking to send me to another frigate because I went to a sea school, which is basically like extra training and became a specialist for a particular sonar suite that was exclusive to frigates. So they were looking to send me to another frigate, but I talked with my chain of command because I really wanted to go out to Japan. And I was like, is there any way you can send me out there? And they're like, well, there's no frigates out in Japan. So we can't really send you as is. I talked with the detailer and they also talked with the detailer about possibly sending me back to sonar school to learn a new sonar system so I could get orders out to a ship in Japan. The detailer looked through the different types of orders that were available and they didn't have anything for me for my particular sonar suite that I was a specialist of. So, you know, they had to send me somewhere and I lobbied and my chain of command lobbied to send me out to 7th Fleet out in Japan. Eventually they got me orders to go back to sonar school, learn a new system for a couple months, and then go out to USS Lassen, DDG-82, who at the time was out in Koska, Japan. Now they've since um, come back to the States. They're now in Mayport slash Jacksonville, Florida. But at the time they were out in Yokosuka, so that's where I went after a couple months of learning the new sonar system. Uh, I guess we'll just start from when I went out there, right? So um, it was a pretty long flight, even from San Diego. It was the longest flight I'd been on at that point. I went from San Diego airport to SeaTac airport up in Seattle, Washington. And then from there, landed in Yokota Air Force Base, which is kinda sorta-ish by Tokyo. Landed and uh, you know got on a bus to drive me out to Yokosuka. Now the bus ride is about two, maybe two and a half hours long. And I was like so jet lagged at that point. But I was finally in Japan after all these years. You know, I've never been to the country before and I've always wanted to go. I just remember like being so incredibly tired, but I couldn't sleep because I was finally in Japan. And I remember, you know, once we got through the, uh, the debrief, once we got off the plane, just going to the little lobby area right before the buses. And there was a little old Japanese lady that was filling up a vending machine. And I'm just like, oh my God, the Japanese vending machine. And then, you know, went all on the bus because, you know, I didn't have any yen at the, at the time. There was no place to exchange it in that part of Yokota. So then we had to get on the bus anyway. So, you know, what you gonna do? So uh, hopped on the bus and just stared out the window the entire like two, two and a half hours, just looking at Japan, you know, just, you know, buzzing by different houses and restaurants and businesses and just seeing Japan life, you know, everything that I'd hoped for and stuff. And it was just so cool to me, you know, even though it's kind of mundane in some aspects, but just the fact that I was in Japan was just so 
awesome for me. You know, I was just filled with so much euphoria. I couldn't, I couldn't sleep no matter how tired I was. And after the bus ride over, I met with uh, someone from my ship, from my division, actually. Um, he went and met me at the, uh, the drop-off point, and uh, this uh, this guy, his English, his accent was uh, really strong, and I couldn't at first tell like what nationality he was. Um, it was just very thick. Closest I could think of was like maybe Russian or like a very thick kind of French accent, but it wasn't like the French accents I was used to. So, you know, we got to talk in, eventually learned that he's actually originally from Belgium, which is right next to France. Really nice dude, he helped me out a lot. So, can't say any bad things about him, but it was kind of an, an awkward first moment because, you know, I thought it was like really jet lagged, you know, talking to him because I'm just like, dude, I can barely understand you. Like, what's going on? <laughs> you know, I thought it was like the sleep deprecation, like finally kicking in and then you know, everything's starting to sound all like wah, 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 wah. Yeah, after we met up, uh, we went over to McDonald's to get some food and uh, went back to the ship, met the division, met my LPO, said, you know, all right, you're pretty much good to go. You know, quarters is at 0730, Liberty expires 07, make sure you're on the ship by then. Went after I uh, got my rack, which is like where you sleep on a ship. You know, after I got that and I uh, got everything all packed in, packed away, um, just took a little couple hour nap and then uh, once Liberty went down um, just went out in town and explored you know got to see the haunch which is uh, the main watering hole for the uh, military personnel around Yokosuka it's literally right outside the gate so can't miss it went out to a little ramen restaurant that was out that way it was probably the best ramen restaurant in that area not the best that I've ever had but Certainly the best in that area, and uh, might be getting into that in future videos as well. But yeah, had some ramen, explored around, went back to the ship, and uh, next day, you know, finished checking in and all that other stuff. That was basically the essence of uh, my first week in Japan, was just a matter of checking in, going and exploring little bits and pieces here in Yokosuka, and then once the weekend hit, I went out and uh, explored Tokyo for the very first time. That was a little intimidating at first because like I didn't really know how to operate you know, on the train system or anything like that or navigate myself around. You know, I just basically watched a whole bunch of like old J vlogs and tried to piece things together and looked up stuff online and like, okay, it's, it's not so hard. And turns out it really wasn't, you know? Just had to do a little research. The following week was interesting because uh, new personnel checking into Yokosuka have to go through this program called AOBICR, which is basically an intercultural briefing where they talk about the different uh, cultural differences in Japan. You know, maybe go through some like really quick Japanese, you know, like sumimasen or, you know, whatever. <laughs> Biru o hitos, hitos, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> Once we've, you know, gone through and learned a bit about Japanese as well as different members of the chain of command on base and like where different uh, things are on base. You know, where's the post office? Where's the gift shop? You know, this, that, and the other. The big event was a, a day long trip to Kamakura, which is also in Kanagawa. It's kind of like a mini Kyoto, I guess. And it also has some nice beaches and is generally just a nice place to be. We took a day trip out there, seeing the sights, doing things like that. Loved being out there, it was awesome. Later on, I went to go see the Daibutsu, Great Buddha, in a town over called Hase. You definitely want to check that out if you're in the Kanagawa area. That was basically my first two weeks out in Japan. For those of you who have been to Japan before, let me know what your first week or two was like in the comments down below in the boobdy boops. And uh, that said, guys, this is the Andy Sun. Sign up for now. As always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye.